Good morning. I'm Kim Keys with Kim Keys Fine Art, and I wanted to come on today and talk about how we mix colors in colored pencil. Uh, we, I mean, the color as colored pencil artists, this um, last uh, few. I mean, the last year with COVID and all, colored pencils have gotten really expensive. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to um, help other color pencil artists that are trying to get started that maybe you can't buy a, a larger set of colored pencils of how uh, many colors you can get from just a few pencils. So today we're just gonna use the primary colors of the yellow, red, and blue to mix colors, and then we're gonna use the white and the black to see what effect that has on them. But these colors, which are Canary Yellow with Prismacolor Premier, uh, Crimson Red and True Blue, and then the black and the white, all of these pencils come just in the smallest set of Prismacolor Premier pencils uh, of, of 12. So if you wanna get a set of 12, you could even go further than what I'm gonna show you today, where I'm just gonna do the, the five squares each way. If you bought a 12 piece set, you could make yourself a chart and then do it with all 12 colors and you would be amazed, well, you'll, you would be able to get 144 colors with 12 pencils. So it's a much better, um, more economical way of getting started with color pencil and not feeling like you have to buy the 150 set or anything. So, what we're gonna do, like I said, I just made this little chart up. I wrote up here that this is Prismacolor so that if I look back at this study later, I can see this. Across, I mean, I wrote dominant up here, which means all of these colors, these are gonna be the ones that I'm gonna apply two layers to. Over here, same colors are listed, and you would do this with 12 or however many you wanna do a color study with. These are gonna be the colors I'm gonna mix with these colors. There'll only be one layer of these, and they'll end up being two layers of these colors at the top. So, and then we'll look at the, uh, the variations of colors we come up with and, um, and how different things affect it. So it's a really good thing to do this. Um, a lot of times, even before I start projects, I will uh, look through my colors and choose which ones I'm gonna use. And then on the same kind of paper of whatever I'm doing my project on, um, I will do some test sampling to see how those colors as I layer them. Because colored pencil, we layer on the paper. Where in oil color or acrylics, you're, or even a lot of times with watercolors, you're mixing the colors off the palette. I mean, off the paper. I mean, of whatever you're painting on, whatever canvas, paper, whatever. But you're gonna usually mix your colors on a separate surface and then apply them to the paper. Well, colored pencil is different because we apply the colors and they're mixing as we paint on the paper. So how the, the way, the order that you apply pencils in makes a difference. And you'll see this as we're working through this today. Um, so I'm going to start with um, the white Prismacolor Premier, even though you're not going to be able to to see this and you want to keep a sharp pencil to help get this in. This is just a very smooth paper that I'm doing this on. But pay, uh, especially if you're ever going to work on toned surfaces uh, of a colored paper, be sure you do a study like this because the color of the paper will affect the color of the pencils, how it comes off. So what you have in your mind may not work out. So it just helps to do test swatches like this to find out. But this is just showing you on a smooth white paper what these colors are gonna do. I'm gonna show you part of this so that you would know how to do if you do a full chart of the colors that you have um, or wanna get. Like I said, if you just wanna get a, a Prismacolor set of 12 
at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or order from Amazon or whatever, you will see how many colors, I mean, you'll be amazed at how many colors you can get. So in this, we're gonna use a light pressure, not a heavy one, uh, about the pressure of how you would write your name. So we're not gonna press really hard, but, and of course this white, you're not gonna be able to see right now. But this is, I'm gonna go all the way down here with white. I'm just making tiny elliptical cir circles that go over each other. And like I said, white you can't see. <clears throat> so bear with me as we get through that boring part of it because you're not seeing any color. But just tiny white elliptical circles that go over, overlap each other to lay this down with a like a handwriting pressure. Okay, now for this one, the color I'm gonna mix with it would be white. So I'm gonna put another layer of white right here. And I'm going a little faster than I typically would when I'm doing true studies so I can get it, but just for time's sake here. Then I'm going to take my, the canary yellow and note here that I wrote the numbers up here so that I would know which pencil number just for reference later and the color names same pressure all all three layers are going to be same pressure crimson red on top of the white and usually it takes three to four layers before you'll start to see blending taking place and on the next layer when I add the white back over this for the third layer you'll start to see the blending effect that goes on the true blue and the black And as I said, it's about a pressure of a three. Handwriting pressure. To we, cause we, if you, this is a very smooth paper. If you press hard, then you won't get many layers on it. But as you're testing colors, I mean, like I said, we're doing one layer of the dominant color first, then the mixing color, and then we're gonna go over them with the dominant color again, one more time. And that's the point we're to here. So even though you can't see the white, I'm just going to do the white. Because this was three, this will be the third layer for the white. Now here's the point. When you're, when you start mixing with the colors, I have this back here. This is just a scratch piece of paper I can write on. But after you do go over this, like I'm going to go over this yellow, And yellow is a pretty, um, 
transparent color here, but and it doesn't. But what, what you get, could happen is you can pick up the colors on your pencil. When we get to the other colors, it's more noticeable. So I always just scribble to get rid of that color off my white pencil. Okay, then we're going to go over the crimson red now. Like I said it was one layer of white, one layer of the crimson red, and now another layer of the white. Same pressure of about three, handwriting pressure. So it makes it more of a pinkish. Oops, before I get going here, because there's a little red on my pencil. So if I get rid of that. Otherwise, I'll bring, I'll contaminate my true blue sample with red and could end up with a purpley looking color here. So you just have to be mindful of that as you make any charts like this. Need to sharpen again. And then on to the black. Won't be able to tell much yet with this until we start to add more rows, and then there's a comparison that can, you can you'll have going on to see the difference of applying these colors and what order they were in. Get away any crumbs with my brush. Okay, so we can see we came up with a gray, a lighter blue, a pinkish red, a lighter yellow, and then of course just white. So now we're going to the second dominant row, which is gonna be canary yellow. So we'll do all of these with the canary yellow. I know it may seem boring as you do this, but it's so helpful to under start to get a better understanding of how colored pencils layer and blend together. Especially before you start on a project, it, it really helps you to see what the effect will be if you do something. And these charts are really nice if you make one with all the colors that you have like this. Then you'll be able to choose colors from the chart and it just it's it's a simpler way of looking or, or be able to look at a color and go if i use that color what else would i have to add to it to to make it closer to the color that i need or whatever there are also other ways that you can uh, and doing some charts like this and testing. I mean, there's we're just blending with the pencils themselves today, just layers. But if you wanna make a, some charts up like this and then test what it would be like if you put these colors down and then after you get the three layers down or however many layers you wanna do, if you wanna blend them with a blending pencil, which is just a colorless wax, the Prismacolor Premier blending pencil works really well. You can also buy those at Hobby Lobby. They're usually in a package of two. And um, anyway, that you just you can blend them together after you get your three layers on. Go over it with a blending pen, all of yours with a blending pencil, and see what you you uh, how you like that. Or with odorless mineral spirits to take a tiny brush. And after you get your three layers on, dampen it with a little bit. I mean, put your pencil, your brush, a tiny brush, in your um, uh, odorless mineral spirits, and then go over each, I mean, 
dampen it off too on a paper towel blob it real quick before you put it on your paper because you never want your paper to be really wet and then go over it and see how you like th that it mixes colors like that you may find something you like it's a uh, when you do it with the odorless mineral spirits it can tend to give it more of a painterly look okay now I'm to mixing colors with the canary yellow so I did the white over this and then the canary yellow back over its own pure color. Just watch of even how two layers of this makes a huge difference. Colored pencil is all about the layering process. Okay, now we're going to mix crimson red with the yellow here. And like I said, second layer is hard to tell. So when the third layer comes on, that we begin to see the mixing of the color. You can for sure see the yellow behind that. Okay, the true blue with the yellow. So you can do this with any brand of pencil that you have. Even if you have children that have colored pencils, this would be a great way to show them how they can mix their colors and um, you can already see the green that that blended in, I mean it turned into already. But anyway, you could you know help them with their, if, even if they had Crayola colored pencils to see how many colors they could make by doing little charts like this with their colors. Okay, third layer, we're going back. Same pressure of about a handwriting pressure over this. Now note here where the white layer was first, then the yellow, and then the white. This one had the, the yellow first, then the white, then the yellow. To see the difference in those two. And then how much darker this one is just with the pure color three times. Okay, so blending with this. With the yellow over it should give us a, an orange. Yeah, and you could tell a difference here because, I mean, we have a pinkish here and now we have an orange here just by having a different base color we worked off of. Okay, and now to blend over this blue, over the yellow. I'm going to really blend them together to show more of a spring green color. If anybody's just coming in or whatever, this is um, just demonstrating how to blend 
the primary colors with white and black in Prismacolor Premier. I just picked one red, one blue, and one yellow, and then mixing them also with white and, and black to see what, how many colors we can come up with. Got quite a few crumbs. Let me scrape that off. Okay, so now we are to the crimson red for the dominant color. Just to let you know, I mean, just watch my website and also be sure to sign up for my newsletter. You can also get a a, uh, a free ebook called Getting Started in Colored Pencil by signing up for my newsletter at kimkeysart.com. There will be a pop-up there and you can sign up there. and you'll get it and then you'll be made aware of anytime I have new classes um, which I'm beginning to work on a few getting ready for some upcoming classes but the updates will be on there and they'll, uh, they also will come out in my newsletter to keep everybody aware I would rather be working on a, a, a real project right now than doing this, but this is really important to show how we mix colors and the, of the process it goes on before I start projects a lot of times just to figure out what colors will work together and blend well to get the effect that I want. No different than you have to do if you're oil painting or or acrylic painting or watercolor painting or whatever medium you use okay so now we're going to mix these colors the white So, like I said, pay attention here. We layered red, then white. And we're going to layer red again, but already you can see what a, you've got a darker pink, but it'll get even darker when we put the, the next layer on. So now we're going to mix yellow. Pay attention to your pencils if there's any re uh, left over from another color so you don't drag it into a a new color you're trying to mix. Thank you, Angela, and I'm glad. I think, I mean, you need to get you a set of colored pencils and do something like this. It is relaxing just to do it. Anytime I pick up a colored pencil, it's relaxing and Try this out. Okay, you can see even here the yellow orange um, and the red orange. Just a difference in them. So those would be two more colors you could use. Okay, so we're now we're going to bring, I mean, this is just the pure color of the crimson red. Just watch. how dark that turns already. 
on the second layer. And the layering is what causes the uh, pencils to go down into the nooks and crannies of the paper with a sharp pencil. That is key to it also. If you use dull pencils, um, you'll have a, you'll see a lot of a lot of white spots. Okay, now we're going to go back over. I mean, go back the, over the red here with the true blue. And this one with the black. It's good to use this with the black because it helps you to see. I mean, just using black by itself, it's very flat. But when you mix it with other colors and you'll get other neutrals and everything that look much better in your paintings than just using pure black. This kind of helps you to see that. Okay, so now we are ready for the, the third layer, which is our dominant color of the crimson red. So we're gonna go over all of these with the crimson red. This third layer is when you start to see real blending to happen on the paper itself. Like I said, there are other methods with the colorless blenders or with solvents, but these colors will just mix without having to have all that. It just depends on the process you like and enjoy. So I would encourage anyone watching today, like I said, get you some colored pencils and try this out and see what you think. I think even Walmart now in their, like where the art supplies are, the color, I mean, even the markers and coloring supplies for kids with the Crayolas, you can find Prismacolor pencils even at Walmart now. I'm not sure how many sets there are, but, or how many is in a set, or if they have the set of 12, but, if you're a Sam's Club member, you can get a set of 48 for like $20, which is very cheap. That's like 50 cents a pencil. And right now to replace one pencil <coughs> in this brand is like a dollar and 35 cents. So that's a real deal at Sam's if you're a Sam's Club member. and would like to try <coughs> uh, Prismacolors. Okay, we've got enough. I think we can get through making this little chart today. Okay, so now True Blue is going to be our dominant color going all the way down. So we're going to layer True Blue. When you make your chart also, I mean, I have another sheet of paper up under here, which gives you a little padding, which makes it much, I mean, you get a better result. With that, than if you just do it on a hard surface.
I'm kind of going fast just because for time's sake to, to get this in today. Okay, now we're going to mix white with the trio. Let me check. Oh, there's colors on there. Be sure you clean your pencil, especially the white one tends to really pick things up, and so does the yellow one. Sharpen my yellow. This yellow and this blue, you can quickly see how it mixes even on the second layer. Then be observant in a minute of how much this color changes with the next layer of blue over it. Like I said, I just chose the primary colors in white and black, but you could get whatever box you get with however many colors and make charts of your own to see how many different colors you could make. That way you don't have to buy a whole big set. That's what I'm saying. I would encourage you even just to start with a, a box of 12 or find look at the back of the box and find out which box, which colors are only in the box of 12 and just make a chart with, with those. Uh, because like I said, that comes up with 144 colors that you can choose from for any project you're working on and you'll know how to mix them. One thing that also will help is to write like up here like how many layers that you applied so that if when you're working on a project I don't have room there I ran out one layer over here that way you would know how many layers you had of each to get that color and you can do these with even Another st kind of study to do would be uh, one where you, say, apply two layers and then one layer and then two more layers. You can do it however you want just to see what you come up with. It's just a lot of fun to do this and then know how to get a certain color you're wanting to get. I really feel I need to eliminate some of my pencils and just um, use a simpler palette. Okay, so now we're going to add, with our dominant color, the last layer back with the true blue. I need to sharpen. You can see how applying this layer of blue then gave us a much darker green. We're going to finish this one and make this last one over here and then we're going to talk a little bit about, look at it and compare some things. Tip broke off on mine.
three layers of that true blue is really pretty. Okay, last dominant color with the black. I'm very rapidly doing this because I want to talk about this chart and everything before we end today. Actually, I'm going to stop because I have one already made. So I'm not going to go all the way through that. Here's the one that I did in prep for this. But I wanted to talk about it to show you the different um, colors that we came up with here. So based on just having these pencils and those five colors, now we have 25 different colors and ways that we could use. You can look at that and to see, like I said, the difference of when we put the white on first or the color on first and, and the difference that white had on things. Um, and so, I mean, like we, we saw here, we have like a, a lighter pink, more of a hot pink here, and then a true red here. Okay, and then like the, to, to see that this is more of a yellow orange or a red orange. And then more, this is a purpley, this is more of like a maroon burgundy color. But these also, like I said, to have a gray, a light gray, a darker gray, and then just the pure black here. But these help you to see also that when you mix these colors with the black, of how you could use those maybe in shadowed areas or even if, I mean, if you were like working on a, a tree or whatever, what colors, just out of what you have, which in the 12 pack, you're gonna have a brown, but even you can make do with this right here for a brown on a tree or whatever. You can just see the, the variety that gives you with five pencils. So don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money to get into this, you don't. You can just buy you a smaller set of pencils. Like I said, I would recommend the 12 set and make a chart like this of all of the colors you can get from that. And then just make note of it so you can refer back to it of how you got those colors what was your dominant colors and how many layers? What were your mixing colors and how many layers were that? So, uh, in order does matter. As you can see, the difference in putting on white first here in all of these colors, and then compared to the color where we put the color down first and white over it, makes a huge difference. This depends on what you need the color for. So, I hope this has been helpful today to all of you. Um, and... I will see you back again on another day. Like I said, you can check out more at my website of kimkeysart.com. Be blessed and have a good day.